Schwip Pixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon and I'm here at Schwip Pixel. I'd like to introduce you to our regular correspondent, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hey, Adam. It's Good great to see, to see you. you. So, so we were supposed to be diving together earlier this week, but the, the plan didn't come together, sadly. How was it? Yeah, um, yeah, we really missed having you there. Um, and it was really nice. So it was a trip to the Farne Islands for those listening in. And normally this time of year, it's the beginning of when the seals start to become much more playful. Their mating season kicks in. It means seals of all ages become much more social and you tend to get really good dives. Mm. Actually, the sort of the word on the street up there is everything's running a bit late this year and probably another week or two would have been better. Right. So it was, an, it was, I guess the highlight was getting the chance to see some friends and dive with them. And that was so sad that you weren't able to join us. Yeah. But on the on the plus, on, you know, it wasn't a classic. I can say to you, you didn't miss a classic seal few days. We saw seals on all the dives. We got seal photos, but we never had any of that incredibly, you know, sort of intense, intense interaction yeah, yeah. that you sometimes get this time of year. Yeah, yeah. I, I I saw on Facebook you had some very nice macro images, so so I figured that you must have uh, must have found another outlet for your creative enthusiasm. Yeah, um, the, the first day was was really quite quiet for seals. Yeah. There was quite a lot of adults around, but hardly any pups. It was wow. really strange. Wow. The second day it picked up a bit, and there was some quite quite reasonable stuff. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually quite happy with the photos I got. I'll, Great. I'll get around to processing them um, in a day or so. Fantastic. Well, the, the reason for our episode today um, is that Alex and I are both desperately trying to pretend that we're not very excited. I, I think Alex might be a little bit more excited than me. I don't know. It's probably a moot point. In mm -hmm. a very large box from Nauticam, um deposited um, on his... Um, well, I was going to send you a door. I suppose that's probably true, isn't it? I've arrived yeah. with the carrier... Um, earlier today um, and we think although we're not 100 sure that it contains the new emwl macro wide lens system so um we, it's a big box it's a big box so so what <laughs> i have it? resisted completely opening look it. at that such self-control yeah. um so um what what i'm going to do is i'm going to put alex on his big screen um, and we're going to watch alex and ooh and ah as he pulls out all these shiny new bits it's very exciting obviously because it's it's such an exciting system to, to, to be looking at. I think also it's quite fun to see what's in the box yeah. simply because, because it's a modular system and not everyone will get all these accessories. Yeah. And I'm not 100%, I really don't know 100% what's in this box. And I guess I should preface all of that by saying last time I tried to do an unboxing live, I opened the box and it was a book and it was in the, the guy was, I knew the guy was sending me a book and I was keen to do it and actually the, the packages got mixed up by the courier and I got a book signed <laughs> to someone else so hopefully there isn't here what I'm expecting yes. and this isn't the personal <laughs> shipment <laughs> yeah something completely so, uh, different I'm, gonna, I'm just going to grab my, my letter opener oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and start Stab hacking up. my way in excellent because I've been waiting all morning to do this it's, uh, I said so, 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 earlier such self control I wouldn't have managed but I think it's really interesting because this system is complicated and particularly when when ordering one, you have a lot of options. Yeah, you, you don't do. need to buy the entire system yeah. to begin with. You can build it up modularly over, over time. Yeah. You can add more lens accessories on the front and also more compatibility on the back. Yeah. And even the, 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 the middle relay unit isn't, isn't necessary. Yeah. So I, I think it is going to be quite interesting to see what's, what is inside the box. It is. Um, it is. Uh, you know, it's also really good to point out that that obviously, although Alex and I both shoot Nikon's and and, and well, full frame Nikon's, the the actual camera, the actual setup is compatible with uh, Canon, Sony, uh, Micro Four Thirds. So so it's a very kind of broad church. It can actually work with everything. Ooh, what's that T-shirt? It's a T-shirt. I've been Ooh. wearing that on on Wet Pixel Live Excellent. in the next few days, I imagine. Oh, we could. Um, you don't, you don't yeah. have to do a wash this week, Alex. You're sorted. Absolutely. Yeah, no, <laughs> at the school in it for a couple of days and then then i'll, I'll have a go probably right Splendid. sorry <laughs> right so there's loads and loads of bits in here yeah um i'll take open the biggest one first because that's likely to get us into the, the exciting meat exciting of, of the bits. product nice and quickly so for and them, then we'll go pick some of the other accessories oh goodness me for those who aren't familiar with the mwl it's uh, it's what's known as an, as an endoscopic lens although it's not really gosh what's that oh that just says set, set one number one right. so let's see what's inside there um, and, it, and essentially, it's a, it's a lens that gives a very unique perspective. Um, in that, it's a, it's a, in this case, it's it's a fisheye lens, or um, we think it's fisheye lens on the end of a long stalk. Uh, and but I think what's interesting about this system, you know, as we said before in our specialist videos, is first of all it raises the bar image quality wise. Yeah. But actually, because it's modular, 
there's three lens optics to begin with that give you three really quite different pictures. Yep. And there is the possibility that that Nauticam in the future and indeed third party manufacturers could actually may, make a whole range of things to go on the end of it as well. Yep. Yep. So it, it becomes a really, really fascinating area. Right. So I'm going to get rid of the cardboard and inside one box, there's another box. Oh, it's like one of those Russian, one of those Russian dolls. Wait at the back of the room. There we go. And inside this rather fancy looking box. Right, yeah. Um, Let's open this up and see one. what's inside. It's, it's got this kind of carbon fiber weave type effect on the outside. Oh, my goodness. More boxes and bags than you could. <laughs> so, yeah, this is there's quite a lot to see here. Um, I'm not sure what these are. They look like buoyancy. They might be, it. mightn't they? They look like buoyancy collars. Yeah, yeah, yeah they do. I, I think, you know, it's. I think one thing I would say about this system is it is, it is very, um, you know, it's quite a lot of investment to go in. I think we were trying to figure out exactly what the retail price is, um, but because it's modular and different people will order slightly different things, we think it's a, was about four four thousand US. For, I think an, depending on your options, between, between four and four and a half thousand dollars. I think as it broadens, yeah, we, we could figure out, but we may be wrong on that. So it, it's um, important as well that Alex has just pulled it out of the way, but but it works with an existing lens. So 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 it works with <laughs> both of the same thing at the same time. It works with. In our case, with the 105 mil uh, Nikon lens or the 100 mil Canon, um, yeah. I presume it works with the 90 mil Sony, um, and um, and yeah. and with the 60 mil or Micro Four Thirds. Yes, there we are. Okay, so and yeah, and, and I'm actually planning to use it on both because I've got obviously got a Micro yeah. Four Thirds housing as well. So yeah. it'd be quite a nice. I think that that might be quite a nice compact rig. Yeah. Using it with live view, I think will be really nice. Yeah. Um, so I think I'm definitely going to use that a bit early on. Yeah. Um, I think one of the reasons it is expensive though is it was an incredible feat of engineering to design this, this whole thing. Yeah. And I'm sure Edward, you know, Edward um, from Nauticam wrote, wrote, told me some things about it when, when designing it. But he said they went through, they, they sent something like 600 million variations to test um, in the optical bench. So, wow. you know, what you do when you make a lens design, you say, okay, do this. Yeah. And then now, computer, come up with all the different variations and report back to me on how they perform optically. What the, what the best way to do it is, yeah. And, yeah because Nauticam have invested in more computing power to back up their optical bench, they actually were able to, to run a huge number of different simulations and really refine the lens. And although I shot this lens back in January, it has changed again since then. And the production version does have some new modifications, which is really good. The other thing is it's got a stack load of glass in it. Yeah. I think just the standard setup has got something like 30 elements of glass, which is, optical glass in it. Yeah. And even a, like a complicated lens like this Nikon, yeah. which is a macro lens, which makes it more complicated than a normal lens, yeah. this has only got 14 elements of glass in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like a whole scale up, yeah. you know, one of these. Yeah. And that's where you begin, you know, bespoke design that does something that nothing else out there really can do with that much glass in it. You start to think, you know, actually it's particularly, it's hard to say it's, it's not good value for money. So I'm going to start opening some of these packages. Look at that. Um, yeah, this is the, the central relay unit. So you can use it without this. Um, so there's a base plate that mounts onto the port. Then this is the relay unit, in, I think, in the middle. And this flips the lens around so that when you look through your viewfinder, left is left and right is right. Yeah. You use it without this, but when you do, it's yeah. a shorter stick. It sticks out less far. Yeah. And also the view is reversed left to right. Yeah. Like the old Inon was, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that difficult to get your head around shooting it backwards, actually. And I'll probably give it a go trying it both ways. Yeah. And that's the so, advantage of being modular, isn't it? In that you could, you can add and subtract bits as you as you go along and, and try different different ideas. Um, I've just realised I'm going to make a massive mess. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. Here's the next one coming out. It's really good. And this is one of the the views. I suspect that this is the the hundred degree. Yeah. This is kind of the the one aimed at SLR users. Yeah. It's got a. I know Edward said that from the prototype I tested. They've managed to make the front element even smaller, smaller across. It's small, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which and the smaller that is, the the easier it is to light the subject, and yeah. the bigger the magnification. So if yeah. you've got your your nudie brank, you know, like my finger coming up to it, you can really get the lens right up yeah. to it, yeah. and suddenly you're shooting a wide angle picture yeah. with the nose of a nudie brank as a foreground Fantastic. subject. Fantastic! What a what a creative tool. So, I'm so such a mess. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> there are three objective lenses. That's the first. Yeah. Like, so that's a hundred mil. There's there's yeah. There's a 60 mil and there's a 130. But what we don't know, of course, is what is actually contained in Alex's box. So, so, yeah, so this looks like ah, the 130 mil. Look at that. Yeah, there we are. And this is the widest lens, but this is aimed a little bit more at videographers. Yeah. 
Although I have to say, when I shot it in Cayman, I use this one the most. Yeah. Um, because it, I guess there was a little bit less wide angle macro opportunities there. It's, so it's quite a lot bigger than the than the previous lens, the the hundred mil that I showed you um, just before. Yeah. Front element wise, if you compare it to my finger now, yeah, you're not going to fill the frame with a nudibranch. No. But with a frogfish, you definitely would. Yeah. And this is actually a little bit wider, and it's got tighter optics, so it allows particularly for videographers to be able to pan across the scene without getting too much fish eye. I was going to say, so, so how how straight is the, is the image? Is it is not curved image? It's a pretty straight image. It, no, it, it's in. I would say it's in that. You know, it's not curvy like a full fish eye, yeah. and it's not completely straight. But right. there's, there are very few straight edges underwater. So yeah, yeah. I think yeah, yeah. Naughty Cam are definitely taking the attitude both with this and the WACP two that yeah. you know you get something reasonably straight yeah. and you know you'll get away with it yeah. rather than worrying about every. You know, you're not. It's not for architecture photography. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is the the 60 mil lens, which is um, is the is, is another is another macro option, but it's a little bit more like a classic macro, but at the end of the tube, and it's able to do two to one magnification from what I remember. Right. I haven't read so it's a really high powered macro lens that you can put on, and this is one more that I would say you'd keep in your pocket, and then you go, well, you know what, I actually want to do a slightly more normal shot, yep. and get this one out. Yeah. Um, and I definitely one of the things I were going to look at for, for diving with this is figure out what's the best way to transport this. You almost kind of want a like a holster system. Yeah, a bandolier. <laughs> because, you know, the strength of the system is having all this stuff with you. Yeah. So these are the three optics again. They're all out now on my desk. Fantastic. So you've got the, the – and this is kind of the, the, the most interesting stuff, I think, in the box. You've got the, the 100 mil, you know, small enough to, to really fill the frame with a – Yep. Um, with the sort of nudibranch size subject. Yep. You've got the 60 mil, which doesn't give you as wide an angle of coverage. Yep. Um, but it does, um, um, but it, it, it's even smaller at the front and can do super, super macro. Yep. And then you've got the um, the sort of the more video aimed lens, but actually I think it's got quite a good role for SLR shooters. Yeah, or yeah, sure. Shooters. Um, when you can see how much bigger a front element that is yep. than, than the 100 mil. Yep. That's the, the 130 at the end there. So I think that's the, the kind of, I'm just going to make sure I keep all the lens caps on. So I don't want to, with all this stuff on my desk, don't want to end up scratching everything. Um, this one here is um, the focus unit, right. um, which I forget what it's for. This might be, um, I'm not sure what this one does, but it, this goes, I think, between the port and the first element. So that's the first so that one goes on first, yeah. and then you can either mount these direct onto this yeah. for a flip image, yeah. or you put the relay in, and then it puts and everything back and around it, the right And it way. extends the the tube as well. So, yeah. so, and, and Alex, on the the adapter that you just had, the last bit that you pulled out, um, yeah. So that that presumably that what attachment does that have on the camera on the housing end? So that's got a bayonet on here, right? So it's Nordicam bayonet. Yeah, and okay. I think it needs that for the strength. It does, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that was my understanding. So, so obviously, if you're going to mount that onto your camera system, and this would be true whether it's Nordicam, oh, okay, flip, yeah, whether well, it's Nordicam, yeah, this is the flip for it, or, I'm, or, or um, another system, you would need to then mount the bayonet onto your macro port, onto the camera's macro port. Well, um, yeah, no, I think it goes onto onto here. So this is the the system. Wow. Um, and it looks like it's got holders actually for some of those lenses. Does, so my comment about the um, yeah, I've really thought of it. Yeah, yeah. So this mounts onto the the camera like this, and then you can flip the lens. Oh no, this this is this holds the the two elements. That's so it, this yeah. hold goes in like that. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, wrong piece. Yeah. This goes in there, and then the the focusing unit goes in and there. It swings round, yeah. Yeah, and then this swings round. It's quite hard to do without having the, yeah, the yeah. leverage of a camera, yeah. but it swings round. And then rotates into place like that. Right. And you shoot out through it. it does, and then does, when you don't want to use it, you can swing it round. And it's a lot easier, obviously, when it's all attached to a camera, swing it round out of the way like this. Looks a bit like and some this kind is of. ready to mount into a standard naughty cam port here. So that's probably an M67 thread there then. Yeah, but it's got the. It, you need to have one which has got the lock, locking holes yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, for yeah. it to lock in place. So, so um, on WebPixel earlier this week, um, our friend from Saga Dive in Spain, um, Jose, is producing um, adapters. So for those of you that, that aren't using Autocam housings, um, 
He's currently producing them for Seacam and Subal, although knowing Jose, if you, if you have another brand, I'm sure he'll have a go at making you one up. So so um, the good news about that, of course, it means that EMWL, it wouldn't only be limited to people that are shooting Autocam housings. Um, it'll be available to people shooting other housings using one of his adapters. Um, so that's that's Jose at Saga Dive. Um, gosh, you got, I don't know, wow. Yeah, so there's some um, buoyancy, buoyancy things arms. in here, which I'm not going to yeah. get out. Yeah. And then there's a few other little bits and bobs, which will, I'll just open any of the ones that look look interesting. And the, uh, so these are just converters. Ah, so something they've, they've introduced since I last tried it as well is um, they've, 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 they've made some custom shades um, for the, 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 the lenses, so to stop you getting flare and video. Oh, and okay. So they're like little. If you remember when we yeah. talked about yeah, yeah. close up lenses on Wet Pixel Live, yeah. we we're saying how some of the Nauticam lenses are quite yeah. prone to flare. Yeah. I think Nauticam are going to start making some of these lens shades yeah. across more of their range over the coming yeah. months. But they they certainly got these now to launch with this, yeah. um, which is quite nice. So you can uh, keep you... these that down with me, but I wouldn't want to use them. Just because, actually, the, you know, they unless I really needed them. Yeah, and obviously they they all they would somewhat increase the distance to your subject potentially because once you've got that on, it's going to stick out the front of the lens. So yeah, yeah, yeah very happy to have them. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. I, they're, 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 I wouldn't necessarily go with them on. Yeah. Um, bayonet holder for float arm. Um, I, I'm not gonna. I don't know what that. That's um. Oh, it'll be. So to start, this is strobe mounting brackets so I, that you can mount the strobes directly onto the stick if you want to. I thought that was a really clever idea. So, I mean, with the mm -hmm. with the um, with the in on one years ago, you used to mount long arms coming off the front of your housing onto it, and they were always a bit of a faff. And and I know I've seen the pictures anyway that with the EMWL, it's got these two balls that you can mount directly onto the lens itself onto the extension tube. That's smart, isn't it? Look at that. This is the hood. This is they're really nice hoods yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. I think if they make ones like this for the the SMC and CMC range, I can see them being very popular. Yeah. This is um this was for the the one thirty degree one, yeah. the more video one, yeah. and actually I imagine that will get used a lot more. Yeah. So I think particularly for video shooters, they don't want that flare coming yeah, in. Yeah. Yeah. Quite agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then um I think the final thing, the, the rest are just various brackets and and things. This I'm not quite sure what it is. So I'm actually going to open it. Um, so this is a a bayonet holder. For a float arm. So, oh, okay, so oh. if you're dying with a float arm, yeah. this provides a place to store your spare lenses yeah. attached to the float arm. Yeah. That's rather neat, isn't That's it? That's very cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 They're amazing at all the things they can make. It really is incredible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the, the quality, attention to detail is amazing. I mean, one of the things that possibly um, – well, maybe maybe people won't may or may not realise, but but um, uh, Edward, the owner of, uh, of Nauticam, and his his right hand woman um, Phoebe are very really active divers. You know, they dive a lot and they travel mm. a lot, and and they take a lot of pictures underwater. So so in many ways, a lot of the sort of the, the trickle down that we're seeing here is from stuff that they kind of wanted to do. So they're they're definitely active and involved in their shooters themselves. So um, so I think that's probably what we're seeing a bit of that mm. there. Oh, there we are. And yeah. then this is, we yeah. talked about this. I thought I'd get it out. Yeah, good idea. This is the mounting for mounting strobes directly or lights, video lights yep. directly onto um, onto the this, the, um, the the tube the, the, snows, the, long, the, 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 the the tube coming out. Yep. And there's actually like a, a position focus light on the top. Yep. It's actually got a cold shoe, so you can ah. unscrew that and put that off. And you know, I've got from my other housings, I've got a cold shoe that has got another ball on it. So could have even more on there and so, so you theoretically could have, you could put a focus light on there you know straight which would shine out over the end of the quite useful yeah, actually. yeah we could just three-way clamp and have yeah. focus lights and and yeah. still lights yeah. on the front yeah. um yeah. which i think is, is really nice i think the downside of mounting them on it is it means you're basically committing to using that then for the dive yeah you are whereas if you have them on strobe arms you're not now i have to say having shot this as long as you know you've got the suitable subjects you're much better off focusing on shooting this for the dive yeah but if you are using it more speculatively then maybe you want to use the whole yep. strobe arms reaching forwards which does allow you to put a bit more buoyancy on the on the rig yeah yeah all right that's most of the goodies Fantastic. there is a, there is some other a few little last things in there but i think we'll uh, uh, they're, they're just various attachment things so well that it gives people a bit of an insight. That certainly didn't, didn't disappoint. Um, Alex, that was very exciting. Um, it so, wasn't me, anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I think for everybody. Um, thank you for that. Um, so I, I think um, 
it's worth mentioning that um, we're both. I mean, I, I, I think probably I have an EMWL coming shortly as well, although I won't subject you all to a second unboxing video um, because I think that's probably over egging it. Um, but um, but um, the um, what we do plan to do, certainly what I plan to do, is to shoot quite a lot of test images with it. Um, at the moment, I'm not traveling a lot, so so it's a good opportunity to get in the water. And I'm going to shoot some some test images, and, and, and I have the lower lens as well, so I'll compare the two. Um, side mm, by side. I think that would be um, really interesting. And we'll post those up on WetPixel itself. So obviously it'll be there as a resource for people in the future. And, and hopefully, obviously, depending a little bit on what options arrive with my version, or maybe I can borrow some of Alex's, we'll try it with the different lenses and stuff to try and give people a, a, an idea of, of how they vary optically as well, which would be a, be a useful resource, hopefully, for everyone. Um, yeah, yeah. And my intention is once you know, it's just is to actually just get out and put it to work. I'm not interested in doing mm, test shots, but yeah. there's. I think actually, particularly for sort of murkier conditions, temperate water diving, it's a great subject for a, a huge number of things. So yep. Yep. if we do arrange a rematch with the seals, you might find me going, you guys have the seals. I'm going to go off and, <laughs> and, and off hermit crabs or something. <laughs> there you go. Fantastic. Well, Alex has already got some images taken with the, I think it was prototype EMWL um, up yeah. on on. on um, on uh, Instagram on his on his website, and um, so you can search for them on there. And I'm sure they'll be joined by lots more very shortly. So, um, thank you, Alex. Thank you for sharing your um, yeah, no your, your, your unboxing. It was a lot of fun. Um, and thank you to everyone for, for watching. Um, we'd like to thank Nauticam for sponsoring the episode. Um, logically, obviously. Um, and um, we'd also, uh, if you enjoyed this, please give it a like. Um, if you would like to discuss more about um, the EMWR system, um, please feel free to ask questions in the comments below. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.